Hello, hello, DM Geezer Jim here, continuing along, Chapter 6, Dungeon Master's Guide 2024 version of it, audiobook slash RTFM, let's get into it, Planar Travel, Chapter 6, Cosmology, Dungeon Master's Guide, Planar Travel. When adventurers travel to the other planes of existence, they undertake a legendary journey in which they might face supernatural guardians and undergo many ordeals. <sighs> The nature of that journey and the trials along the way depend in part on the means of travel, such as magical portals or spells. A portal is a stationary interplanar connection that links a specific location on one plane of existence to a specific location on another. Some portals function like doorways, appearing as a clear window or a fog-shrouded passage, and interplanar travel is as simple as moving through the portal. Other portals are locations, circles of standing stones, soaring towers, sailing ships, or even whole towns that exist on multiple planes at once or flicker from one plane to another. Some are vortices, joining an elemental plane with a very similar location on the material plane, such as a swirling pool of magma in the heart of a volcano leading you to the plane of fire, or a maelstrom in the depths of the oceans leading to the plane of water. Passing through a plane or portal can be the simplest way to travel from the material plane to a desired location on another plane. Often, though, a portal presents a venture in itself. First, the adventurers must find the portal that leads where they want to go. Most portals exist in distant locations, and a portal's location often has a thematic similarity to the plane it leads to. For example, a portal to Mount Celestia might be located on a mountain peak. Second, portals often have guardians charged with ensuring that certain creatures don't pass through. A guardian is a typically a powerful magical creature, such as a djinn, a sphinx, a titan, or an inhabitant of the portal's destination plane. Finally, most portals aren't open all the time, but only open in particular situations or where certain requirements are met. A portal can have any requirement, but the following are most common. A command. The portal functions only if a particular command is given. A command is usually a word that can be invoked in any language, including a signed language. Sometimes a command must be given as a character passes through the portal, which is otherwise a mundane doorway, window, or similar opening. Other portals open when the command is given within 15 feet of themselves and remote remain open for 1d12 minutes. A key item. The portal functions if the traveler carries a particular object. The item acts much like a key to a door. This item can be a common object or a particular one created for a portal. The City of Sigil above the Outlands is known as the City of Doors because it features an overwhelming number of such item-keyed portals. Or random. The portal functions for a random period, then shuts down for similarly random duration. Typically, such a portal allows 1d6 plus 6 travelers to pass through, then closes for 1d6 days. Situation. The portals function only if a particular condition is met. A situation keyed portal might open on a clear night, or when it rains, or when a certain spell is cast in its vicinity. Time. The portal functions only at particular times on the material plane, during a full moon, during the spring equinox, or winter solstice, or when the stars are aligned in certain positions. Once it opens, such a portal remains open for a limited time, such as for three days following the full moon, uh, for one hour, for even as little as ten minutes. Learning and meeting a portal's requirements can draw characters into further adventures as they chase down a key item or they scour old library, libraries for commands or they consult sages to find the right time to visit a portal. Spells. A number of spells allow direct or indirect access to different planes of existence. Gate spells and plane shift can directly transport to adventurers to any other plane with different degrees of precision. Etherealness allows adventurers to enter the ethereal plane, and astral projection lets the characters project themselves into the astral plane and from there travel to the outer planes. The next section is traveling to the outer planes. Not a huge section. Quick, quick video today. Yay. Uh, described in the sections that follow are four planar features that connect multiple outer planes. One is the infinite staircase. Another is the river Oceanus. The third is the river Styx, and the fourth is Yggdrasil, the world tree. Other planar crossings might exist in your campaign, or it might be possible to walk or journey aboard a wondrous train or similar vehicle from one plane to another in your cosmology. Brief descriptions of each of the tra transits that, uh, methods that were given us. The infinite staircase. 
The infinite staircase is an extra dimensional staircase that connects the planes. An entrance to the infinite staircase usually appears as a nondescript door. Beyond the portal lies a small landing with a, with a stairway leading up and down. The infinite staircase changes appearance as it climbs and descends, going from simple stairs of wood or stone to a chaotic jumble of stairs hanging in radiant space where no two stairs steps share the same gravitational orientation. It includes ramps, hovering platforms, and clockwork conveyor belts along its endless construction. Uh, the adventure anthology Quest from the Infinite Staircase provides more details about this planar pathway. The staircase is home to Nafos, a noble genie created by the planar winds that blow into the expanse through its myriad doors. A distant and benevolent observer, Nafos hears, whisk, hears wishes spoken through the multiverse, wishes he fulfills with the help of adventurers who happen upon his Aeolian palace. Doors to the infinite staircase are often tucked away in dusty, half-forgotten places that no one frequents or pays any attention to. On any given plane, multiple doors might lead to the infinite staircase, though entrances aren't common knowledge and are occasionally guarded by devas, sphinxes, yugoloths, and other powerful creatures. Our next transit is the River Oceanus. The waters of the Oceanus is uh, the water of the Oceanus is sweet and fragrant, as benefits its headwaters in the blessed field of Elysium. This plane-spanning waterway provides a path through some of the upper plains. It flows through each of Elysium's layers, passes through the top layer of the Beastland, streams across the top layer of Arborea, and finally drains away somewhere in Arborea's second layer. Though it isn't as far-reaching as the Styx, the Oceanus is still a commonly used path between plains and layers. Trading vessels sail up and down its length, and small towns line its banks. Travelers can usually find a boat to hire somewhere along its shores. The River Styx. The River Styx bubbles with grease, foul flotsam, and the putrid remains of battles along its banks. The ill effects of the Styx are described under hazards back in Chapter 3. The Styx churns through the top layers of Acheron, the Nine Hells, Gehenna, Haiti, Carceri, the Abyss, and Pandemonium. Tributaries of the Styx snake through lower levels of these plains. For example, a tendril of the Styx winds through every layer of the Nine Hells, allowing passage from one layer of that plane to the next. Not true, but anyway. Sinister fairies float on the waters of the Styx, crewed by pilots skilled in negotiating the unpredictable currents and eddies of the river. For a price, these pilots carry passengers from plane to plane. Some pilots are fiends, while others are the souls of dead creatures from the material plane. And last is going to be Yggdrasil, the world tree. The world tree, Yggdrasil, is like Yggdrasil. Your pronunciation is, depending on where you're from, is a cosmic ash tree that spans the outer planes and links many of them to many worlds of the material plane. Its root stretches into the lower planes, touching Hades' pandemonium and possibly other lower planes. Most of its massive trunk rises through the plane of Ysgard, and its branches stretch through the upper planes and across the astral to the material plane. Some legends describe a great tree, a seedling of Yggdrasil, that the god Crillon planned and intended on the first world at the dawn of time. When the first world was destroyed, seeds from this tree scattered into the void and took root to form the worlds of the material plane. Thus many philosophers and naturalists view all trees, or even all plants, as descendants of Yggdrasil, part of a vast network of plant life across the multiverse. Planar travelers can climb among the roots and branches of Yggdrasil to travel from plane to plane or world to world. Some creatures position themselves as expert guides to this vast cosmic network of branching pathways, constantly studying the ever-changing paths as the tree continues, continues its eternal growth. And that's it. That's movement. That's how we move around the planar, uh, from material plane to outer planes, inner planes, whatever plane you decide to use for cosmology. Uh, most of these ideas are going to involve encounters, adventures, possibly campaigns. Uh, very, very rarely do you want to just, as a DM, have a random portal show up that your players walk through that leads to a random plane for no reason whatsoever. Uh, the outer planes, the lower planes, the upper planes, these are the playgrounds of gods and angels and demons and greater devils. Uh, your players have very little business going here just randomly, okay? So if you are using portals, you need to have them as part of your plan, as part of your adventure, as part of your campaign. The premise, the, the hooks, the conflicts, all of those, uh, especially when you're going from a material plane to an outer plane. That's the first thing to kind of keep in mind. 
If you choose to use extra planar play, this section covers how to get your players from one place to another and back again. Uh, keyed items, this functions heavily in sigil as it was stated, the city of the city of doors, the cage. No one knows how many portals are there except the Lady of Pain. No one knows how to activate each of these portals except for the Lady of Pain. And no one can open or close portals without the consent of the Lady of Pain. Okay. Uh, Pizunia, the first layer of the abyss, the infinite layer of the abyss is also called the plane of a thousand and one portals or the of the, the plane of closets um, because the same idea is there. All these portals lead from the first layer of the abyss to countless other places and countless other layers of the abyss from there. Portals are very, very, very convenient to move your party around to and fro. Uh, sometimes you're going to see uh, an, or, an elemental vortex is mentioned. These function the same as, as portals, but they go directly between the material plane and uh, elemental planes, the inner planes. Elemental vortices typically don't show up in the nine hells leading to the fire plane. Uh, the, the masters of the nine hells aren't going to allow direct access for an, another plane unless they need it. So keep that in mind. Elemental vortices differ from portals in that they are simply for the elemental planes travel. Okay. Your players can transport themselves with gate, plane shift, etherealness, and astral projection. Understand that etherealness is not an instant ticket. Neither is astral projection. You're going to some place in the astral sea, and you still have to find your way from there to your destination. That in and of itself is going to be potentially a huge adventure. When you're in the ethereal plane, there's a lot of creatures that can see the into the ethereal plane from the material plane. There's a lot of creatures that exist in the ethereal in nature that can touch the material. When your players are moving around in there, they are potentially targets for these creatures. The ethereal plane, uh, the ethereal plane, and the astral sea are not vacuums. They are filled with life. They are filled with other travelers. So when you're using these for transit, make sure that you're planning for the possibility of encounters and adventures within these realms. Likewise, with the four transits that we've been given, each one of these is legitimate. They are all described in extreme depth in your planescape cosmology uh second edition save the infinite staircase this is a box this is my opinion it's a box of cheese this is cheese whiz i'm too lazy to deal with the outer plane so i'm just going to give us an infinite staircase that's fine because it is super low maintenance it is an easy way to provide your movement from one place to another there's no denying that uh but you're also cutting out a lot of potential for adventure so if you need to let your players move between the material hell plane and the nine hells in easy mode give them the infinite staircase it's okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with easy. There's nothing wrong with easy. The River Oceanus, the river sticks two sides of the same coin. These massive magical waterways that cover uh, near infinite planes, which would make them near infinite in length and depth, etc., etc. The, the River Oceanus is described in detail in the planes that it touches. Likewise with the River Styx. The planes that it goes through talk about the river sticks in those planes. So if you want to build off of here and you have some homebrew ideas, knock yourself out. If you're already kind of intrigued in planescape and the cosmic wheel and those kind of things, uh, there's there's a ton of information for you to dig through. There's a ton of information in the second edition planescape library to plan entire campaigns around the river sticks, the river Oceanus, the Yggdrasil, and even the... Uh, uh, the Infinite Staircase. Uh, Yggdrasil features heavily in the module uh, in the campaign Dead Gods. It was published back in 2nd edition. Lots of good examples of using these specific locations, these movements in play. But the thing to understand is, yes, these are set up for convenient movement. Because a plane is uh, removed from the material plane and infinite in nature, um, it's going to be difficult to go to and from. Now, one little caveat. Um, gate and plane shift can trans directly transport creature adventurers to any other plane with different degrees of precision. Asmodeus is not going to allow your players to plane shift into his lobby. Okay. Loth does not allow any, any plane shifting in any gate with her within the 66th layer of the abyss. She's a goddess. She has absolute control over this. And any other master of a plane or master of domain has the same power. So if you want to let your players gate and plane shift, 
Make sure when they land, they land close to a gate town, one of the, the border towns between the Outlands and the, uh, the associated plane. They shouldn't be able to pop into to the sixth layer of, of the Nine Hells with a gate spell from Faerun. We shouldn't be sitting in Waterdeep going, you know what? Hell, let's, let, let's, let, let's go ahead and take a trip up to the top of Mount Celeste. I want to go hang out with Bahamut for a little bit. Drop a plane shift and let's go hang out with Bahamut. That shouldn't be a thing. You can plane shift to the bottom of Mount Celestia and then make your way through the planes with the mechanics that are allowed within Mount Celestia. You should be very, very cautious about allowing gates and plane shifts that allow to drop your players off directly where they need to go. Uh, the book, uh, the stupid Vecna book, Vecna Even Ruined, mm, so many people laughed at it. It's like, it's a, it's a theme park. You're supposed to go on this multiversal adventure and every step of the multiverse is getting off the bus that Morden Cannon's driving, walk 10 feet to the dungeon, and walk back out to the bus. Man, you don't want to cheese your players out on that, and you don't want to cheese your universe out like that. So if you are going to use outer planes, if you're going to use extra plane or travel, make sure that you are keeping in mind the dangers associated. Make sure your players are aware of the dangers associated. And it shouldn't be an instant uh, a click of a button to show up in front of a, the big bad. Does that make sense? The, the planes that you're traveling to are in control of things that are far beyond comprehension. So far out of the realm of CR that you don't get a CR for a god. So your players certainly shouldn't be able to impose their little level 8 magical will on a god and show up outside of the palace of Sheng Lu ready to fight him. Does that make sense? Keep that in mind. But hey man, thanks so much for hanging out. This was a, a fun video. I am all about the planescape, all about the cosmology, love the cosmic wheels. Personally, I wish this section was bigger, but it is suitable enough to get your to pique your interest. You're either going to go, oh, that's entirely too much. I'm going to make up my own system, and good on you. Or you're going to be like, ooh, this is fascinating. I want more, and good on you. But hey, likes, follow, subscribe, push those buttons, do all the cool little stuff. Join us over on Twitch. More than importantly than anything else, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you for the next episode. Take care.